I am uh, Richard Feldman. Welcome to this uh, book club interview. Uh, so I am the author of Element Action, which is not what we're discussing here. We did a separate book club on that. Tim is the author of Rust in Action. You'll meet him in a second. And uh, this is a totally different book and a much different audience. I kind of accidentally got asked to write a book. So that's, that's kind of the pitch for Rust in Action. If you are from sort of a dynamic programming background, or even I say a Java, but you've never really encountered these terms, systems programming, or any of the concepts around that, that's really what Rust in Action is trying to provide a little bit of a glimpse in to not so much teaching you systems programming, it's primarily there to teach you Rust, but it uses concepts from sort of that subfield to really enable you to feel welcome inside the Rust community. I intentionally, I'm like one of the last people to learn Rust without the book, the official The Programming Language, the free one online. I actually intentionally didn't refer to that at all because I was overly uh, concerned about like copyright protection and things like that. I didn't want to plagiarize other material. Some modern languages are starting to adopt some of these things, like uh, like Java now has an optional type, which works essentially, as I understand it, the same as Rust's uh, option type. The difference is that Rust uses this exclusively. It's not like Rust has option and they also have null and they also have undefined and they also have an, another way. It's like, no, there's just there's just the one, there's option. Rust always wants to offer you the choice to kind of boil away the abstraction and go right to the depth of what's actually happening. You have this cool example in here. Um, there's actually, I mean, there's awesome examples throughout the book, but um, like here you have, the, the title of this section is all of networking in seven paragraphs. And you've got like just a diagram. It's like, look, here's here's how your network stack actually works. It's not, you know, it, it's not. So it's not just a Rust book. It's it's like a, it's a combination of while you're learning Rust, you're also learning about low level parts of the computer. Rust has these kind of really inf strongly enforced guardrails that you need to intentionally opt out of. Whereas in C++, you need to opt into the guardrails. The reason why you're a C++ programmer and you might look to, say, a Rust is that C++ is notoriously difficult to get right. If I were coming from like a Go background or a C background where errors are returned as values, I might think, uh oh, uh oh, this is not this is not going to be good because uh, what if I forget to handle it, right? Uh, but yeah, but the way that Rust does it, it's it's not like that at all. I mean, you, you cannot forget to handle it. The compiler will be like, you forgot to handle this error here. <laughs> you need to do something about that. Subscribe to the GoTo YouTube channel now and join the experts in person or online at any upcoming GoTo conference using the promo code BOOKCLUB. Visit gotopia.tech to learn more.